Hello my friends. So today, I wanted to read to you this article that I found. Uh, it's on the Epoch Times called, Jordan Peterson Exposes the Postmodernist Agenda. There's a picture of old JP there. I think this article is really interesting because this is exactly the sort of philosophical abstract thinking that is dangerous because it provides the illusion of an explanation as to what is really happening in the West. It provides the illusion of an explanation because it, it's describing what's happening in an accurate way, but in a way that's so abstract and disconnected from the truth that this sort of understanding is... It leads nowhere, because it doesn't tell you what is really happening. It, it's way too abstract, and because of how abstract it is, it masks, it hides the actual truth behind it. So let me read to you some of this, and I will decode it for you. Because Peterson is pretty much right on the mark here, but it's it's too many levels removed from reality. And you'll see what I mean as I start to read it. Communism was not popularized in the West under the banner of communism. Instead, it came largely under the banner of postmodernism and aimed to transform the values and beliefs of our societies through its Marxist idea that knowledge and truth are social constructs. This is the first thing you need to take note of. It, being postmodernism, an abstract idea, aimed to transform the values and beliefs of our societies. Ideas don't aim to do anything. An aim is just another word for a goal. And abstract ideas don't have goals, I'm sorry to say. People have goals. Groups have goals. So, when he says it aimed to transform the values and beliefs of our societies, that's not something that an idea on its own does. Ideas don't have aims. There must have been a group of people, or one person, or whatever, some kind of person, some real living thing, with the aim to transform the values and beliefs of our societies. And postmodernism is just the name that we're giving to the ideas proposed by those people. So that's the first thing we need to understand. Because a philosophical doctrine in the abstract has no aims on its own. These aims are assumed by people. So we need to be revealing who these people are. It's pretty simple in my opinion. So continuing on. Under it, it being postmodernism, not people, not the people who are actually pushing it, but it being postmodernism, a new wave of skepticism and distrust was applied to philosophy, culture, history, and all beliefs and institutions at the, found, at the foundations of Western society. The postmodern philosophy came into vogue, another like passive way of describing it, it just came into vogue. It just materialized out of nothing. It's like uh, a virus or a disease that just, you know, comes in through the air. It's, it's, it has nothing to do with people who actually have an agenda here. No, the agenda is just a purely abstract philosophy. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't actually get to the root of what's happening. So the postmodern philosophy came into vogue in the 1970s, according to Jordan Peterson, after, quote, classical Marxism, especially of the economic type, had been tho so thoroughly discredited that no one but an absolute reprobate could support it publicly. Peterson said that it's not possible to understand our current society without considering the role postmodernism plays in it. So once again, roles are played by people. If, you're, if you want something to happen in the world... 
It has to be enacted by people. Ideas don't just enact themselves. Ideas don't play roles without people actually enacting them and pushing them. So, way too abstract. He says, because postmodernism, in many ways, especially as it's played out politically, is the new skin that old modern or that old Marxism now inhabits. So, just to make a note here about Marxism, it's he's basically doing the same thing with Marxism that. Um, pretending that Marxism was just some idea that spread all on its own, without acknowledging who Marx really was, and how his ideas were pushed, who, who was responsible for spending the money, and hiring the people, and printing the papers, and printing the books, and everything else that pushed these ideas, who was responsible for putting people into the university systems, who pushed these ideas... And if you want to learn more about Marx in particular, he was basically an agent of the industrial elite. His uncle was of the Phillips family, who would, uh, th that, that family would later go on to establish the Phillips uh, Electronics Multinational Corporation, huge corporation. So these people were ultra-rich, ultra-aristocratic, big-time industrialists, and uh, Marx was part of that whole family. He was supported by these people his whole life, secretly, so that he could actually carry out this project. So watch, watch I'm going to make another video, probably released either today or tomorrow, um, where I'm going to read Miles Mathis' uh, great article revealing all of Marx's extremely uh, damning connections who he's really connected to, where he got his money, who was supporting him, and who was pushing his ideas. Because all of these ideas get pushed. And this is the next thing that Jordan Peterson goes on to say. He says, that, the postmodernism, that is where identity politics came from. And from there, it, quote, spread like wildfire from France to the United States through the English department at Yale University, and then everywhere. So, remember he said that postmodernism is aiming to transform and uh, undermine the beliefs and institutions which are foundational to Western society. And yet, we're supposed to believe it just spreads like wildfire? How could an idea which undermines the idea that it's, it's actually antithetical to and contrary to the most deeply held and cherished foundational beliefs of a society, how does an idea antithetical to that just spread like wildfire without any help? Without lots and lots of money behind it, without lots of resources and energy pushing it. It doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. It, it has to be pushed from the top down. It has to be pushed by some kind of powerful organization, a powerful group of people. It's not just going to spread like wildfire within the very society which it's trying to undermine. So, continuing on, I'm going to skip a few parts here. So, And this is another interesting part of it. He says, It was no longer specifically about economics, Peterson said. It was about power, and everything to postmodernists is about power. And that's actually why they're so dangerous. Because if you're engaged in a discussion with someone who believes in nothing but power, all they are motivated to do is to accrue all the power to them. Because what else is there? He said, There's no logic. There's no investigation, there's no negotiation, there's no dialogue, there's no discussion, there's no meeting of minds and consensus. There's power. And keeping in mind that this is the philosophy that's being pushed by the ultra-elites, the same people who were pushing Marx to begin with, these 
crypto-Jewish financiers. For him to say that their, their philosophy that they're pushing is all about power, it's a rejection of logic, it's nothing but power. This is exactly what you'd expect from a cryptocracy ruling class from people who have been trying for centuries to usurp the powers of the Western world. And this reminds me of the video that I made that there, there's no debate with our rulers. So Peterson is saying this, but he's you keep in mind he's saying it about a, a, an abstract philosophy. He won't touch the fact that this is the philosophy of a certain group of people who has power and is trying to expand that power and has it all the way to the top. They're behind the scenes, they're all the way at the top. The financial rulers who have been behind most of the wars, most of the revolutions in the West. So to continue on. And so, since the 1970s, under the guise of postmodernism, we've seen the rapid expansion of identity politics throughout the universities. It's come to dominate all the humanities which are dead, as far as I can tell, and a huge proportion of the social sciences. So once again, rapid expansion of identity politics. Ideas don't expand. Ideas don't infiltrate. Ideas don't um, aim to undermine. That's what people do. People do these things. These are not... <laughs> ideas don't act on their own. It's like... This, this seems so basic and obvious, but the, the way that it's put in this very abstract philosophical way, someone can read this and they'll be like, hmm, postmodernism is the problem. Wow, we need to fight against postmodernism. I know it just said that there's no logic and no investigation, but we really need to get these ideas out there. Without realizing that you're dealing with a power that's pushing these things, and they're pushing it for a reason, they have the agenda, they have the aims to undermine Western civilization's foundations. And uh, to talk about the ideas as if they're sentient, uh, autonomous beings all on their own is uh, a distraction at best, misdirection at worst, I don't know. Uh, a misunderstanding, I guess, at best, I should I should say. Um, so one more section I wanted to read. The people who hold this doctrine, Peterson says, this radical, postmodern, communitarian doctrine that makes racial identity or sexual identity or gender identity or some kind of group identity paramount, They've got control over most low- to mid-level bureaucratic structures, and many governments as well, he said. But even in the United States, where you know a lot of the governmental institutions have swung back to the Republican side, the postmodernist types have infiltrated bureaucratic organizations at the mid- to upper level. So they're at the low- to mid-level, and also the mid- to upper level. They're at all levels. <laughs> but, once again, infiltrated. Postmodernist types have infiltrated. These are people he's talking about. We need to find out who these people are and who they're connected to and who is paying for this. Because um, it takes a lot of money and a lot of resources and time. One paragraph up, he says, We've been publicly funding extremely radical postmodernist leftist thinkers who are hell-bent on demolishing the, found, the fundamental substructure of Western civilization. And that's no paranoid delusion. That's their self-admitted goal. So, who is funding this? Who is pushing this? It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy, like I was saying, and resources, to push an idea which is deconstructing and meant to demolish the fundamental substructure of Western Western civilization. It's like if you're if you're trying to convince somebody something, say uh, somebody's got a job or something and they like their job, their job's decent. that's 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 how they make a living. But you want to convince them to 
drop that job and pick up something completely different, it'll take a lot. It's not like they're just going to immediately change their mind about something. It's the same thing with Western civilization. We've had these values and these beliefs for hundreds and hundreds of years, thousands of years. And it's not like the moment someone suggests, some French philosopher suggests, oh, uh, these things are wrong, then everyone's going to be like, oh, wow, uh, this idea is spreading like wildfire. I can't help but be infiltrated by this idea. What the fuck? I hate Western civilization now. It doesn't work that way. It would take a lot of planning, a lot of effort, especially the infiltration of the school system, that the way that kids are taught. And all of this, it takes planning, and it takes energy, and it takes money and resources. It doesn't just happen on, all on its own. That's not like Jacques Derrida wrote a book, and then all of a sudden everyone's like, holy shit, Western civilization's fucked up, this guy's right. After living their whole lives uh, according to those values and beliefs. As most Europeans have done, and continue to do. So, yeah, I just wanted to point out the difference between this type of understanding the old uh, Petersonian understanding versus a rational understanding where you don't look at ideas, you don't say, oh, these ideas are spreading like wildfire, which removes the reality of the situation from it and makes it purely abstract. You're not looking at who is actually motivated to do this, how they've been doing it, in what way they've spread these ideas, and who's actually responsible for funding and promoting these things. If you just look at the ideas, you're going to be lost. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense to think that just some random idea sprouted out of nowhere, out of the void, and convinced everybody to forsake the civilization that their forebears built for thousands of years. It doesn't make any sense. So... I find it fascinating that Peterson is able to say so much, uh, so many accurate and true statements, but at a level of abstraction that really doesn't get him in trouble or the rulers in trouble. Because uh, we need to be actually looking at who is responsible, not what. Because there's, there's no idea that's going to actually be responsible for these things. It's a group of people, they have an agenda, the ideas that they're using are part of their agenda. The agenda doesn't work on its own. So I think I've labored this point enough. Uh, I hope you'll stay tuned and watch my reading of Marx's genealogy and Marx's historical and familial background as well, which will be the next video. That will give you an idea about how these projects are actually accomplished. Because, uh, they don't just happen on their own. They are projects and they are consciously planned and carried out with lots and lots of money behind them. So, thank you for watching.